Hello all. So, we are going to proceed further with what we have learnt about indirect speech. So, till now that we have learnt various ways how would we convert it and what are the changes that are required to be done from, indi from direct to indirect. What are the points that we need to take care of? What are various tenses changes that we need to take care of? Pronouns, noun, pr pronoun that we would be taking care of changes, adverb, adverbial changes, even this that we would be taking care of and further now when we are talking about, let us understand this point to change questions. We were dealing with the questions with the questions in direct speech, in direct speech the questions that we get and how do we handle them during the indirect part. So, we have already understood few questions, now we would be proceeding further. So, next question, next point that we need to understand in the questions in, in indirect speech is to change question, again please remember to change question which can be answered. Please remember this because we have already learnt about few more parts of questions, types of questions because there are various different type of questionings. So, we need to remember this, fine, which can be answered in yes or no, fine, this is main thing that we need to remember. The questions which answer can be answered only in yes or no, we need not have bigger sentences for it. So, such questions when we are talking about okay, or we will we'll, we'll say into indirect. So, as I said there are various type of questions, various different ways of questioning and those questions which can be answered in just yes or no, nothing much in this. Fine, such type of questions in indirect speech that we are talking, fine, indirect speech, such type of questions in direct speech, word if whether, please remember the word whether, if this is used before the question in indirect, in indirect speech what will do? See, what point that we need to understand is, if it is a yes no question, fine indirect speech. In direct speech if the question is such whose answer is going to be in yes or no, the word whether is used before the question in indirect. So, when you are going to start the question in indirect when we go it would be starting with whether. I will give you the example of it and again that you need to take care of is rules for change, again you need to take care the next point is rules for the change in tense of question sentence of question sentence are same as for, for change in normal tenses, in normal tenses in indirect, in indirect speech fine, but sentence will not start with the auxiliary verb, with the auxiliary verb of the tense and for this the word that, please remember this for this point the word that is not used between reporting verb and reported speech as conjunction in indirect speech for question sentence and even the question mark is not used, is not used in indirect speech. Please remember this very important points that we would take care of, fine the first thing that we are taking care of is for the yes no. Fine, in, in the direct speech word whether is used before the question in indirect speech, fine, 
please remember this first point. Then rules for the change in tense, in tense of question sentence as same as for the change in normal tenses, remaining changes would not happen. So, again we need not worry, the rules for the change in tenses remains the same, fine, for the as in normal tenses for indirect. So, need not worry about that point. Next is speech, fine, but yes, the normally it would not, but again sentence will not start with the auxiliary verb of the tense, fine. The word that is not used, this again we would take care this because every time the word that is used, we know that, that every time every sentence that we are forming from direct to indirect that is used, but in such cases that is not used between the supporting verb and reported speech, be, be, between the reported reporting verb and reported speech, we will not use the word that as a conjunction, because we are using the word that as a conjunction and it would not be used in indirect speech of the question sentence. And again, one very important point that we would take care of is question mark is not used in indirect speech. Please, please remember this, fine. In such cases, let me give you example for better understanding, fine, let us go with the example, fine. She said, will he participate in the quiz competition? So, how would we convert as the points given, what would we remember? She said, will he participate in the quiz competition? So, how would we change? Please take care all the points that we have studied there, few which come here, we would keep that in mind and what let me tell you. She asked, fine, like even if earlier we studied, said would become asked, fine, said would become asked. So, she asked me, fine, who was asked? I was asked. So, she asked me if he would participate in the quiz competition, full stop. See, how is it going? It is going as a sentence. He, she asked me, she asked me if, we are not using that, we are using if he would participate in the quiz competition. So, and there is no question mark because he has given a statement that what she said. Fine, what she had said will he participate in the quiz competition. So, again this is I am I am giving into my words, she asked me if he would participate in the quiz competition, it is a statement full stop. What she asked me I am telling you, so I am not questioning you, I am telling you. When I am telling it to you, it will be a full stop, that logic we need to understand. Earlier it was a question, but now it is a statement. I am passing a statement what the other person said, fine. Let me give you another example even so that uh, you can have a better understanding, okay. I said to him, fine, are you feeling well? Please understand this, again in this we would I, I have asked, I said to him, are you feeling well? So, how would we convert this even earlier that we have learned the points, now keep every point in mind and how would we convert this? Yes, let us have a understanding of this, he asked, I asked him, said would become asked, I asked him if, fine, he was feeling well, full stop. See, I have asked, what I asked, I have narrated, fine, it was in the self this thing, like earlier even if we say, we have understood, we have studied the same thing. So, I asked him, I asked him if he was feeling well. So, again that would not be coming here, fine, 
Now, again let me explain you one more point. Next point that we would be co covering is, next important point that we are looking at is changing imperative and exclamatory sentence, fine sentences from direct, direct into indirect. So, what is the point that we need to take care of? Changing for imperative and exclamatory sentences, fine, from direct to indirect. What is, what are the points that we will take care of, fine. Let me uh, like tell you, fine. Now, it is to change imperative sentence into indirect speech the word please remember this points that would help you out a lot ordered or requested or advised or suggested or forbid or not to do is added in reporting speech or in reporting verb depending upon nature of imperative sentence in reported speech. So, when we are talking about please understand this to change imperative sentence into indirect speech fine the word ordered requested or advised or suggested or forbade or not to do is added fine reporting verb depending on in the reporting verb we, we, we would be adding it it is depending upon the nature of imperative sentence. So, again imperative and all those sentences when we are looking at. So, depending on them in the reported speech that we would make the changes. So, example let me take he said to me please help me. So, now what would I say he is a he said to me please help me. So, what is this? Someone has requested you for a help. Someone has requested you for a help. So, what would we write it? Yes, it would be he requested me to help him. Fine, simple it is when we have converted he said to me please help me. So, now he requested me to help him. Fine, it is simple, it is only that said to me, fine he said to me is requested me, would change to requested me, said to would change to requested, fine. So, please take care of this part and if you want I can give you another example, she said to him you should work hard for exams. So, now she said to him you should work hard for exams, this is not requesting neither she has ordered. So, how would we how would we write it, how would we mention it, what would be the changes that we would give. This is the person has given a suggestion, do not you think it is a suggestion. So, we would add it in this way the sentence would be she suggested him to work hard for exams. It is simple, she suggested him to work hard for exams, it is simple. The sentence she said to him, she said to him you should work hard for exams. It is simple, she suggested him to work hard for exams, nothing, simple, fine. So, it is only that we have used the word suggested as we have mentioned, fine. So, hope you people would understand further about the same. Next, let us understand and go for the next to change again to change exclamatory sentences. The word exclaimed, please remember this, the word exclaimed with joy or exclaimed with sorrow because see there are 
it is exclaiming not only with joy, even we have sorrow, feelings are various, fine, there are different feelings, happiness, sorrow, fine. So, accordingly exclaiming with joy, exclaiming it with sorrow or again wonder, when do we use this wonder? When? Tell me when do we use wonder? When unexpected something happens, we are we are really happy with joy, we are surprised, we are wondering, oh this is really out of shock, either good or bad, we have that, that exclamation even, that wonder, we are, we are, we are surprised. Fine, in such cases even, fine is added in the reporting, verb depending upon, yes, depending upon the nature of, of exclamatory sentence in indirect speech. So, please, because there are various exclamations, various feelings. So, accordingly, according to our feelings, the exclamatory word is used fine according up depending upon the nature of the exclamatory sentence fine upon according to the reporting verb depending upon the nature of the exclamatory sentence in indirect we would be converting accordingly into indirect speech how let me give you an example fine uh, okay let me say he said hurrah i won a prize he said hurrah i have won i won a prize so, again this is out of joy, he is happy. So, what will we do? Fine, he has exclaimed, hurrah is again an exclamatory word. So, out of joy that he has passed the sentence, what will be converted to? See how would we convert? He exclaimed with joy that he had won a prize. So, this is simple and understood that he said hurrah, I have won the prize, I have won the prize, hurrah is an exclamatory word. Now, you are expressing the person's feeling in the indirect, the saying explaining it, hurrah was out of joy, so ex he exclaimed with joy, hurrah was, he exclaimed with joy that he had won a prize. Fine, simple. Now, again uh, let me give with a different uh, exclamation. Okay, she said, Alash, I failed in exam. So, failing in exam could not be in joy. Will anyone be in joy after failing in exam? No. So, what would be given this? See this. Fine, she exclaimed with sorrow. She exclaimed with sorrow that she had failed in exam. And one more point that we need to remember, after every exclamatory word, we will have an exclamatory mark. This is an exclamatory mark. This is an exclamatory mark that we would be giving. Fine, this is an exclamatory mark that we would be giving after every every exclamatory word fine and after it is converted to indirect we need not give the exclamatory mark so she said alash i have failed an exam out of happiness no one is going to so alash is a sad expression so she exclaimed with sorrow alash oh, we are exclaimed with sorrow that she had failed in exam, that she had failed in exam. But yes, in indirect speech, in indirect speech we will not use exclamatory word, it will be ending because it is a statement, it will be ending with full stop, fine, yes. So, I hope this is understood well. Now, let us go to the next point, okay. In indirect speech, let us again give one important point, in indirect speech, for sentences having models. What is having models? Please understand it. In this case, what are we going to do? In this case, what we will do is, 
indirect speech for sentences having models. Models like we have already learnt about model verbs, models like let me give it can, may, must, shall, etcetera, shall be changed. Okay, this are changed to we already know about this, let us uh, understand it. Change to could, might, had to, should, respectively. For indirect speech, sentences having models like can, will, fine, may, must, shall, etcetera, that we are working on to, those are changed to could, might had to, should, would and all those things, fine respectively accordingly it is changed, if it is can it will be changing to could and all those, fine so accordingly. So, let us take an example, he said I can drive a car, he said I can drive a car. So, now how would we do it? It is can, so how would we convert it? Let's see this. He said that he could drive a car. So instead of can, it became could. So he said, "I I can drive a car." Now in indirect, it becomes he said that he could drive a car. So can is converted to could. Now next, when we are looking at example, let me give you one more example. Okay, he said, "I." may buy a computer. So, how would we explain this? He said I may buy a computer. So, now how would we com com convert this? He said that he might, may might, he might buy a computer. So, it is simple, fine. Please understand this small things, fine conjunctions when we were speaking in, fine in this conjunctions can, may, those will be how it would be converted, the models, fine the models, the models when we are talking about the sentences having those models can, may, must, shall, will, how would we convert them? Fine, so that we need to take care of. When it is from direct to indirect, fine, those models that we would be converting, how would they be converted? Fine, this is the last point for, from for indirect speech, from direct to indirect. This is the last point that we need to take care of. After that, we are well versed with the direct indirect speech, we are well prepared and we have a complete knowledge that how would we make the changes. So, now the last point but most important again, so please give it a proper concentration. However, these models, these models that we have already read about in the last point, if used in direct speech do not change indirect speech like if already instead of will would is used first itself then it would not let me give you an example make you understand better so we can talk on this further they said we would apply for a visa see would is already used in would is already used in direct speech. So, we cannot make the changes of that would in indirect speech. So, how would we take care? Now, when it is converted, it would be they said that they would apply for visa. See, when would is already used, it cannot be changed to will. It would remain the same would. So, again would remains the same remaining rules we know and accordingly it is worked on, fine. They said we would apply for visa, they said that we converted to they, 
would apply for visa. Let me give you one more example. She said she could play via piano. So, again we would proceed further is she said that she could play a piano. Same thing it remains the same could could that we are covering the point right now. Fine other thing remaining changes we know how we are going to make it and accordingly it is done. So, I hope now all our points for direct indirect speech are clear and now we are very well versed with how would we be proceeding further. So, have a happy learning. Thank you.